Charles Dickens. You know, the guy that wrote A Christmas Carol and lots of other things. Well, what are five facts about him that I think you need to know when studying A Christmas Carol? Let's find out. <laughs> How's it going, Revision Squad? I hope you are having a great day. Once again, it's me, Liam, aka Mr. Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and in this video, I'm going to go over five facts about Charles Dickens that are relevant to A Christmas Carol that I think you need to know. I will be covering lots of other contextual facts in upcoming videos, but these five facts are ones that don't quite fit in anywhere else and are more broadly about Dickens and his story, rather than any particular character or theme. I hope you find this video useful, and I do recommend that you grab a pen and some paper so that you can jot down some notes as this video plays. If you find this video useful, you know how to make your appreciation known, I'm sure. Alright, so first of all, I think it's important for us to acknowledge that Charles Dickens experiences a fluctuating social status throughout his lifetime, certainly between birth in 1812 and the publication of A Christmas Carol in 1843. Now, Dickens was born into a middle class family, which meant that he was privately educated for a time. Dickens' father, however, wasn't necessarily all that great at budgeting his money and so he was sent to a debtor's prison when Charles was just 12. The young Dickens didn't have to spend much time at this prison because he lived with a family friend at the time, but he did have to spend his Sundays there. For various reasons, his father's circumstances meant that Dickens had to leave school and instead had to find a job. He found one quickly, and the young Dickens worked 10 hour shifts gluing labels onto pots of boot blacking. He worked in unpleasant conditions, which informed his writing a great deal. Eventually, Charles' father was able to pay off his debts, and after working at his job for a little while longer, Charles Dickens was able to resume his education. After school, he worked at a law office and gradually climbed the social ladder going to the theatre, becoming a political journalist, and deciding that he would become a writer. Why is this important? Well, it shows us that Dickens was well aware of what it was like to be both part of the working class and the middle class in Victorian England. He was well aware of what it was like to live a life of relative comfort, as well as one of immense difficulty and poverty. Despite spending much of his life with a decent degree of wealth, Dickens was sympathetic towards the poor, having lived through that sort of existence himself. It informed his political stance, and therefore his writing. So it turns out that A Christmas Carol actually was not Charles Dickens' first Christmas story, although it's definitely his most famous. Now, Dickens was by no means the first author to celebrate Christmas in their works. Several authors and essayists were working on this before Dickens, which definitely resulted in the genre of Christmas literature emerging. In writing A Christmas Carol, Dickens was adding to this increasingly popular genre, which may have worked in his favour, as we'll see a little later on in this video. By the way, if you really want to see how this factoid is relevant to A Christmas Carol, I strongly encourage you to read Dickens' earlier story, called The Story of the Goblins Who Stole a Sexton, which I'll put a link for in the description or in the comments if I can remember. Published seven years before A Christmas Carol, it shows how the story's ideas had been swimming around in Dickens' head for quite some time. If you're looking to hit the top grades in your English Literature GCSE, those 7s, 8s and 9s, I really recommend that you read this story. It's only short. That's it for this fact, but there will be a video that explores Victorian Christmas in more detail in future, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Now one of the most classic pieces of creative writing advice you could 
ever give someone is to write what you know. Draw on your own life experiences, steal things that happen to you, borrow bits from people that you know and implement this all into your own writing. And it turns out Charles Dickens was following this advice as well. For instance, Scrooge's sister is called Fan. Although a minor character in the story, I think we can all agree that she is quite a positive one, and her absence and later death could have contributed to Scrooge shutting himself off to the world. Anyway, who else had a sister called Fan? Well, none other than Charles Dickens, of course. For him, Francis, who was called Fanny by the family, was an older, talented sister who he saw little of growing up because she was sent to study at the Royal Academy of Music in London. In later life, Dickens admitted how much it hurt to see his adored sister go off to school and win prizes when his own education seemed to have been forgotten and he had been sent out to work. And although there is definitely a sense of jealousy here, note that Dickens refers to his sister as adored. There's still so much more that we can say about Dickens' sister. She married a fellow musician in 1837, as they had two sons, one called Harry and the other Charles. Interestingly, Dickens' nephew Harry was a very sickly child, which critics have noted may have inspired the creation of Tiny Tim. Harry was alive when A Christmas Carol was published, but he died about five years later before he even hit his teenage years, showing just how real the plights of Tiny Tim were in the Victorian era. It doesn't stop there. Even Scrooge is likely to have been inspired by people Dickens knew, or at least knew of. Critics have suggested that Scrooge might have been based on two famous misers, a miser being someone who is especially tight with their money. These people are John Elwes, an MP from the previous century, and Jemmy Wood, a bank owner who died when Dickens was 24. In addition to this, Scrooge's views about the poor definitely echo those of Thomas Malthus, a political economist who supported enforcing the slowing down of population growth. Dickens massively opposed Malthus's views, and so it is interesting to see how he uses them in his own writing. Dickens shows a negative character, Scrooge, support these views in order to present them as negative, flawed and incredibly undesirable. Not only did Dickens draw upon his personal life when writing this story then, but he drew upon his political views also. This will take us nicely to our next factoid. Keep in mind that works of literature can be vehicles for political thoughts. Weirdly, Dickens actually tried to convey the message of A Christmas Carol, or one of its messages at least, through a political pamphlet first. As he got older, Dickens grew increasingly vocal in his support of poor children, and in 1843 he went to tin mines in Cornwall to see the working conditions the children working in them had to endure. He was disgusted by what he saw. This disgust was only amplified when Dickens visited a London ragged school, a type of charity school set up for the poorest children. This disgust was amplified even more when a parliamentary report was published that discussed the largely negative effects the Industrial Revolution was having on working class children. With fire in his belly, Dickens planned to publish a political pamphlet called An Appeal to the People of England on Behalf of the Poor Man's Child but realised that this would be a bit dull, basically, and that not many people would read it. Instead, he decided to get this message across in a Christmas story, knowing that lots of people would read it and would be more likely to be swayed by its narrative. So it seems that one of the story's key messages is about the treatment of poor children, such as Tiny Tim, but also the figures of ignorance and want. 
In having this as one of the story's key messages, we can see how Dickens took advantage of a genre's popularity to convey a political opinion. Okay, so for our final factoid, I want to point out that A Christmas Carol had a somewhat unusual publication journey. After a bit of messy discussion with his usual publishers, Dickens agreed to pay for the publication of A Christmas Carol. Dickens was very fussy about the final product, which meant that it was only ready two days before it was due to be sold in shops. The initial print run, so the initial amount of copies that Dickens and co had, was only 6,000 books long, and they had all sold out by Christmas Eve 1843, less than a week after the book had been released. Its popularity continued well into the following year, and actually continues to this very day, as A Christmas Carol has never been out of print. Now, you would think that this would make the story count as a success, right? Well, in some senses, yes, of course it is. However, Dickens's fussiness meant that the first edition had quite a high production cost, and so it only made Dickens about a quarter of what he had expected. That disappointed him quite a bit. Irrespective of whether or not you think A Christmas Carol was a success because it was popular, or a failure because it didn't make Dickens that much money, its self-publication is important. It shows just how strongly Dickens felt about his story and the messages that it contains. He was literally willing to put his money where his mouth is. Perhaps he really was desperate then to ensure that people learned from his story. So there are those five facts about Dickens that I think you need to know, or at least keep in mind when working with A Christmas Carol. I think it's useful for you to be mindful of his political stance, informed by his lived experiences, and how he took advantage of literary trends to spread his message as far as possible. Genuinely, I hope that you found this video to be useful and that it has given you some interesting information to consider when studying A Christmas Carol. If this video has helped you out, please do consider showing your support by liking, commenting, subscribing to my channel, sharing this video with classmates, friends and teachers, and so on. And yeah, I know that YouTuber stuff is super cringe, but it really does help me out more than you know, and really, it helps me to help even more young people too. As ever, I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are revising, please do remember to take those frequent short breaks, as a burned out student is not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you, yeah that's right, you, deserve to be. Okay, so those are five facts about Charles Dickens that I think you need to bear in mind when studying A Christmas Carol. But now the question is, how are you going to use those facts to support, develop, or boost your analysis of A Christmas Carol? Please do let me know down in the comment section below. Cheers.